morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly briefing. This week, we'll be hearing from Public Health, the Streets Department, and our Engineering Department on stormwater issues. And as usual, we will start with Janelle Heinrich, who is the Director of Public Health Madison, Dane County. Good morning. Um, as of today, we have surpassed 10,800 cases of COVID-19 in Dane County. This is a 65% increase from one month ago today. Thursdays, we release our weekly snapshot, providing an overview of the last two weeks of data. And I have a few details I can share right now. Our 14-day average with without UW included is now about 94 cases per day. And with the university, it's 112 cases per day. What this means is, as we've said in the past, unfortunately, we're seeing widespread illness in our community. And that the line between uh, UW-affiliated and non-UW-affiliated individuals in cases of COVID is, is getting harder to draw. We know that there are many other non-UW college students testing positive in Dane County, and some are from other colleges um, who are individuals who are returning to Dane from campuses around the state and the country. The overall proportion of cases that are in the 18 to 22 year old age group has dropped to 22% in the last two weeks. This is down 45% from last week. And for cases, individuals diagnosed with with COVID outside of the 18 to 22 year old age group, there's been a significant increase of 18% in the last two weeks. Right now, there are 60 individuals hospitalized with COVID in Dane County. And we're seeing hospitalizations increase in every age group over 19 years of age. And this is what we need to be paying attention to and continue to be mindful of uh, all the things that we can do to keep us well. With the increases in cases statewide and those in our community, uh, we are seeing record level demands for testing at the Alliant Energy Center this week. Uh, Wednesday, oh, record levels on Tuesday, Wednesday was very high and we're tracking this data very closely. We know that the wait times were high on Tuesday and we've reconciled that. Uh, they're lower now, um, almost uh, equal to what you experienced uh, uh, before this week in the change in hours. Yesterday, the National Guard averaged 439 tests per hour, which is equivalent to a test every eight seconds. We're grateful for the experience, the training that they're providing us, and our ability to take this information and processes to be able to continue to do this as we transition into that um, staffing model. About 25% of the people who tested uh, on Tuesday at the Alliant Energy Center were from out of Dane County. And up until this week, uh, that's only been about 20%. So we're seeing this as, as likely an increasing trend and we're happy to be able to provide support. We want people to get tested, but we wanna remind you that um, if you need to get tested and you have a healthcare provider, please uh, contact your provider um, to see if you can get in with them before you come to the Alliant Energy Center. And while anyone can get tested, we recommend testing um, for individuals who have had close contact, which means within six feet for about 15 minutes, cumulatively over the course of time, with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19, people with COVID-19 symptoms, people who have regular exposure to a large number of individuals, for example, people who work um, in the grocery store and other service industries, people who work closely with high-risk populations. We do not recommend testing for people who plan to attend a, a gathering and want to make sure that you're okay. Testing only tells you if you had COVID on the day that you were tested. A negative test does not necessarily mean that it is safe to gather with others. And we really encourage you not to just get tested frequently for your peace of mind. Tests are expensive. We wanna make sure that they are focused on those who might need it most. Uh, we are also offering a flu shot clinic at the Alliant Energy Center. This is available for Dane County adults and children six months 
and older who did not have health insurance or a medical home, and children six months and older who have Badger Care or Medicaid. Interpreter services are available at the Alliant Energy Center. If you have insurance, please contact your doctor's office or your pharmacy to get your flu vaccine. Our hours of operation for this flu uh, clinic are the same as the hours of operation for the uh, COVID test site, which is Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 to 8 p.m. and Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 8 to 4 p.m. And it will be open until November 21st. In the first two days that the flu uh, clinic has been open and running at, at the Alliant, we have immunized over 107 people. Uh, we are not able to give a vaccine to individuals who need a COVID test on the same day, who have tested positive for COVID in the last 14 days, or who have recently been tested for COVID and are waiting for their results, or if you're experiencing any symptoms. Um, this, this site, if I haven't said it, will be open until November 21st. So I'll be happy to answer any questions later. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Next, we're going to be hearing from Charlie Romines, who's our superintendent of the streets. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've been asked to discuss the, our uh, leaf collection efforts, which are ready to get underway, and also uh, comment a little bit about the operating and capital budget as it relates to the streets division. Uh, leaf collection, uh, as a both indirect and direct result of COVID. Uh, we've had to make some tweaks this year. Some of them are extensions to um, ideas we've already been uh, trying uh, last year, particularly. Um, one of the things I think will be very, uh, residents will be particularly interested in is uh, in the past, we've had a map on our website, that uh, collection map that was often a little confusing and hard to understand. Um, uh, thank you to City IT, who's worked with us in a relatively short period of time to do away with the map. Instead, if you go to where that map used to live, which was madison.com forward slash streets, forward slash yard waste, forward slash leaves, instead you'll find a place where you can plug in your address. When you plug in your address, it will give you three dates. Those are dates to, as well as all the, all the rules. Those dates are set out dates. Those dates will all be Sundays. Uh, what that means is that following Monday through Saturday, we will be by to collect your leaves. Uh, the hope is that we'll give our residents a pretty certain time frame to get their leaves out um, and allows us to uh, bring back certain efficiency that we will uh, lose through some of the COVID collection methods. Um, additionally, what you will see, depending on which parks you enjoy, uh, one of the ways that we're changing this year Instead of using our trucks to haul each load of leaves all the way out to the far east side where we have a facility that composts them, we're going to be short hauling those to several parks throughout the city and then using larger semi-trailers to haul those out. What that will allow us to do is to collect the leaves from the curbside and get them away from the gutter much, much faster. Um, so those should be some uh, improvements uh, in that process. Uh, related to uh, the other services we provide in the capital and operating budget. In the streets division, the capital budget is largely equipment. There is uh, money that we have to keep our facilities improved and up to date, but it's largely equipment. And it's largely equipment in two ways. One is uh, investment in new equipment technologies, and the other is keeping a reasonable life cycle for our equipment, some of which gets used very hard uh, during difficult winters. Uh, the mayor's capital budget really allows us the opportunity to, to continue uh, in both of those avenues in a meaningful way. Um, we have no concerns about our ability to keep equipment on the roads and operating, keeping the life cycle reasonable. Also, we're able to continue to invest in new technologies. An example would be for this winter, uh, we have two new hook lift trucks arriving. Those help us year round, but what it's going to allow us to do in the winter is uh, put on a 3,000 gallon brine tank. That brine tank allows us to almost double the amount of anti-icing we'll be able to do in the winter when the weather cooperates, uh, which is really a salt reduction strategy. So um, we're going to continue to be able to improve on those investments we've been making over the last few years with the capital budget. 
Um, for the streets division, the operating budget is largely people. As much as we try to automate where we can, the services we provide are largely uh, labor intensive. And so for us, the ability to retain positions, uh, recruit and hire positions is critical. Um, the services that we provide that most people will recognize, trash, recycling, brush collection, large item collection, leaf collection, street sweeping among others, um, and the one that looms on us all year round is snow and ice. Um, we're very happy that uh, in the mayor's budget, uh, there's really, uh, while we'll need to make a few minor tweaks that I think will be mostly imperceptible to the vast majority of our residents, uh, to a few of our services, snow and ice, we have everything we need uh, to continue to provide our snow and ice as we have in the past to give everybody an opportunity to be safe uh, moving around the city. So. Um, with that, I'll answer any questions at the appropriate time. Thank you, Charlie. And um, because we're just about to hear about stormwater, I just want to remind folks that um, please do look up um, on the website, cityofmadison.com, there's a lot of slashes there, but look for the streets department and find that leaf pickup information uh, because we do really wanna make sure that we keep those leaves out of the street, out of the storm sewers, and out of our lakes. Um, we spent, uh, in my household, we spent the weekend raking, um, including up out of the gutter, and um, we're composting most of our leaves, but we got a nice big pile for you, Charlie, um, to come pick up, and uh, just hope that everybody else will, will do the same. I know that with COVID, it feels like we got so much to worry about, but our lakes are still important, and we still need to keep those leaves out of them. Um, and so now we'll hear from Janet Schmidt uh, from our engineering department um, with an update on stormwater. All right, thank you. Um, so a, a stormwater utility update for you, and I do have some slides to share. Um, so as many, many people know, we're, we're doing a very comprehensive watershed study uh, in Madison. Our goal is to study all the watersheds that contribute to the lakes and the river. Um, right now we have 10 studies that are in, in various uh, stages of completion. Most of these are on the west side, but we are starting to move on the, to the isthmus, and, and next year we're gonna start with the Starkweather uh, Watershed Study in 2021. So these studies are in various uh, states of completion. Um, the first round, uh, we have four studies, and these, were, these uh, are nearing um, the final stages where we're gonna be able to uh, show proposed solutions for some of these large flood mitigation uh, efforts, and then have our third public uh, informational meeting in uh, winter of 2021. And we also have round two that we just finished our second public informational meeting, and then round three, which we just kicked off, which include the Isthmus area and the Willow Creek watershed. So some of our highlights for projects that we completed, um, some of these projects uh, usually do take uh, at least a year or so to get through the design process and then actually go to construction. So a couple highlights, we, we recently finished the McKenna Boulevard flood mitigation project, which was a, a large uh, project over by Elver Park, which uh, included uh, re reconstructing a concrete channel and putting in a flood wall to better protect the properties along the, the Green Tree Landfill. Uh, we also recently completed the Hawks Landing South flood mitigation project, and then uh, the Nautilus Pond project, which is a stormwater quality project that's located over by Mineral Point Road. So some proposed budget uh, projects for next year. Uh, we are going to continue our work over at Hawks Landing with our North Flood Mitigation Project. Uh, that's gonna be done in, in coordination with our Lower Badger Mill Creek Pond Project. Saw Creek Greenway, which is over off of um, High Point Road and Old Sock Road. We have a large greenway project that we're proposing. The Old Sock Trails Business Park, uh, Greenway and Pond, um, they sustained a lot of damage in our floods in 2018. So that has risen up to our priority list. The Hickory Hollow Greenway project, which is off of University Ave over by Capitol Avenue. And then we're working with uh, St. Mary's, um, SSM and Truman Olson sites for redevelopment and flood mitigation in that area. 
For stormwater quality, we have a lot of things going on as well. We have our SALT initiatives. Um, we have our SALT certification program, and there's still time to sign up for that. And this is a, a program that allows you to get trained for applying SALT on uh, sidewalks and, and parking lots, as well as roadway applications. Um, the training is free, so and it's done virtually, so people who are interested could look on our City of Madison engineering website for more information. We're also completing a green infrastructure pilot project that is over in the Westmoreland neighborhood, which is over by Glenway Golf Course. So uh, uh, improvements for that would be uh, completing green infrastructure, which could include pervious pavement, rain gardens, stormwater basins, and rock cribs. So that is a five-year study that we're, we're completing with the USGS to see how uh, green infrastructure impacts our surface water, uh, for flood mitigation and also for water quality. Um, we are also completing a, a LEAF study over in the Cherokee Marsh neighborhood. This is a, a two-year study on how LEAF collection methods impact surface water and a phosphorus load, which impact the water quality of our lakes. So this is a, uh, excuse me, a two-year study with the USGS and in conjunction with the League of Municipalities and uh, we're gonna evaluate that area for, for leaf collection methods and how best to uh, propose leaf collection in the future. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. All right, so I have a number of updates uh, as well. I just want to start by reminding folks uh, about the availability of the um, COVID-19 testing at the Alliant Energy Center um, and at other community sites, um, and certainly through your health care provider. Um, and to remind folks that testing is not a substitute for best practices. So we really need everyone to be wearing their masks, um, in really every situation where you're out of your home and near anybody who's not part of your household. We need folks to be maintaining that six foot plus distance um, between folks that are not in your household and yourself and then uh, be washing your hands, sanitizing, and really doing everything you can to prevent the transmission of COVID-19. And along with that, in order to keep us all healthy this winter, we really do, again, encourage folks to get your flu shot. Again, please do that through your health care provider if you have one. And if not, please do come to the Alliant Energy Center um, and get that flu shot. Um, we, I feel like we cover a lot of the same topics every week, but that's because it's, uh, these are very important things. Um, next topic is the fall election. And this is, we're in the, the middle of National Voter Education Week. And so our clerk's office has been working hard to educate our community and voters uh, in our community on Monday. They were encouraging folks to be vote ready. And let me say, it is not too late to do any of these things if you haven't done them yet. So to be vote ready, you want to verify your voter registration at myvote.wi.gov particularly if you have moved since the last election, it's important to make sure that your voter registration is up to date. If you want to register to vote, you can do that through myvote.wi.gov. You can also do it in person. The city clerk's office um, is open and available uh, for voter registration weekdays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can register at the UW Memorial Union Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Union South on the UW campus from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. You can register to vote at the library Dream Bus. You can register to vote at Goodman South, Goodman South Madison Library, Lakeview Library, or Meadowidge Library on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday from noon to three, and at Hawthorne Library, Monroe Street Library, or Penny Library on Tuesday and Thursday from noon to three. Lots of options to register to vote. On Tuesday, the clerk's office reminded us to be mail ready. Um, so if you want to vote via an absentee ballot, 
You can submit your request again through myvote.wi.gov. You can send an email to voting at cityofmadison.com or you can request uh, it in writing at the city clerk's office. And if the city clerk's office doesn't already have a copy of your voter ID online, uh, or excuse me, on file, you'll need to attach a photo or a scan of your ID. No selfies, just a scan, please. Um, if you've already requested your absentee ballot, you can track the status of your ballot at myvote.wi.gov by selecting track my ballot at the top of the screen, and it will tell you uh, where your ballot is in the process. On Wednesday, the clerk reminded us to be vote plan ready um, and to make sure that you have created a safe voting plan for yourself um, and encourage your friends and family to do the same. The clerk's office has up on their website a checklist which you can use to determine which options will work best for you um, to vote safely this November or before. And today, the clerk's office is asking us to be ballot ready. Find out which offices are on your ballot and research the candidates. To see your sample ballot, again, you can visit myvote.wi.gov and select what's on my ballot, and you will see a list of all of the races that we're voting on this fall. And then tomorrow, they're asking us to level up our voting engagement, um, and you can do that by listening to the clerk's office new podcast, uh, which you can find, um, it's called Madison Votes, and you can find it on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. And you can learn all about how your ballot will be counted, voting accessibility, COVID-19 safety precautions at the polls, and election security, and many more things. So again, it's Voter Education Week. Please be an educated voter. Um, make sure you're registered, make your safe voting plan, um, and be ready to vote. All right. Um, we also um, mentioned last week that we now have a vacancy on the city council. Um, uh, former alder Donna Moreland has resigned, leaving a vacancy in the 7th Aldermanic District. And the city uh, council is now taking applications to fill that vacancy. So any applications uh, should be emailed to ccec at cityofmadison.com. They must be received by 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday, October 21st. The application needs to include name, address, phone number, email, a biographical resume with education, work, neighborhood, and civic experience, a statement on why the applicant wishes to serve, a statement on what the applicant wants to accomplish, and whether the applicant plans to run for the seat in spring 2021 or not. And the timeline is as follows. Um, on Wednesday, October 21st at 4.30 p.m., applications are due. On Friday the 30th at 4.30 p.m., there will be a special CCEC meeting, that's the Common Council Executive Committee meeting for applicant interviews and the recommendation of a selected candidate to the council. And then on Tuesday, November 17th at 6.30 p.m. at that council meeting, um, the council will decide on the appointment of a District 7 alder. So if you live in District 7, um, certainly think about uh, serving to fill this vacancy and get your applications in. Next, a uh, little update on Metro Transit. On Wednesday, October 14th, uh, Metro Transit will be, uh, and the, the City of Madison Transportation Commission will hold, are holding a public hearing. It's at 6 p.m. and they will review and discuss service updates that were put into place on August 23rd. Um, so passengers are included are encouraged to provide feedback on how the August service increases have been working and whether there are any essential trip destinations that are being missed. Um, the hearing will also cover our network redesign plan. Um, we are in the middle, or excuse me, at the beginning of a redesign plan that will take place in 2021. 
Um, as part of the plan, we've hired a consultant to complete a comprehensive review of all Metro Transit service. And this will be used to reconfigure Metro service uh, to accommodate the planned bus rapid transit network, um, as well as to make the entire system faster and easier to use. So we're encouraging folks to attend this virtual public hearing and provide feedback. Um, there's a number of ways you can do that. Obviously, you can attend the hearing. You can also fill out the feedback form at mymetrobus.com. You can call 608 266 4466, or you can email mymetrobus at cityofmadison.com. And now on to lighter topics. Um, it is the time again for the annual Jeffrey Clay Erlinger Civility and Public Discourse Award. And so we're inviting you to submit nominations. Um, the award recognizes City of Madison residents who share Jeff Erlinger's dedication to and passion for public policy, civility, and individual and human rights. The recipient will be an individual who conducts their daily life uh, in accordance with these values and who's made a significant impact on the Madison community. Both the recipient of the award and the person who nominated them will each be able to designate, designate a nonprofit charity to receive $250. Nominees need to be adult residents of the city of Madison whose work, program, project, policy decisions, or actions have made a positive contribution to the community and its residents. They need to have demonstrated leadership in public advocacy focusing on constructive civil debate, fairness, and openness resulting in effective outcomes in the city. Uh, they need to have demonstrated a dedication and commitment to treating people with civility, respect, and dignity. And they may have been compensated for their work as long as they exemplify the values represented by the award. All nominations must be received no, long, no later than November 1st, 2020. Um, and you can request an application form um, or get your questions answered uh, by calling the mayor's office at 608-266-4611. I do encourage folks to think about um, who you think is a good nominee for this award. It's been an, a tough year in our community and uh, raising up civility and contribution to our community is, is something that we would really like to celebrate this year. So please do get your nominations in. Next, uh, we're promoting a new event, Walktober, uh, to motivate people to get out and walk uh, as a method of transportation um, and as a healthy activity during the month of October. Walking is a great way to boost physical and mental, mental well-being while also being environmentally friendly. Uh, so there's a number of different planned and independent opportunities for Walktober. Um, there are new walking route ideas each week. There's a walking challenge, a reading list, a school challenge, and activities that you can do on your own or with your household. Um, of course, please remember to stay home if you feel sick, avoid gatherings while participating in Walktober, and keep your physical distance when you're out walking, and please wear a mask if you're going to be near others. Walktober is a partnership between our traffic engineering department, uh, Madison Parks, Madison Public Library, the Greater Madison MPO, the Healthy Kids Collaborative of Dane County, Downtown Madison Inc., the Madison Central Business Improvement District, and Dairyland Walkers. You can visit the Walktober website for all the details, and that is cityofmadison.com slash traffic engineering slash walktober. That's W-A-L-K dash T-O-B-E-R, Walktober. So it's your chance to get out and experience Madison by foot uh, or by wheel and get to know both your neighborhood and your city. Uh, finally, just want to remind folks, as I do every week, of the community resources that are available to help families in need. Um, our housing helpline will help connect folks to housing. If you are homeless or in danger of losing your housing, please call 608-264-0549 or email housinginfo at cityofmadison.com. If you need help with your internet connection or phone service, call the Public Service Commission at the state. That number is 608-267-3595. If you need help finding a child care provider, uh, you can call um, Community Coordinated Child Care at 608-216-7022. 
Um, and for any of these uh, needs or if you need access to food resources or any other um, human or social service, please call the United Way at 211 um, or text your zip code to 898-211. Um, These resources and more are posted at cityofmadison.com. On the homepage, please click on the community resources link. And finally, upcoming meetings um, today. We have a 4.30 p.m. meeting of the Community Development Authority, a 5.30 p.m. meeting of the Community Development Block Grant Committee. At 6, the Body Worn Camera Feasibility Review Committee meets. And at 7, the Common Council has a special committee of the whole. On Monday the 12th at 4.30, there's a Finance Committee meeting, and at 5.30, a Police and Fire Commission meeting. On Tuesday the 13th at 4.30, there's a Finance Committee meeting. Those two Finance Committee meetings will be briefing the Finance Committee on the Executive Operating Budget, if you want to tune in. Um, And then on Wednesday, October 14th at 5, the Transportation Commission will meet. All of these meetings are virtual. You can sign up to testify at any of them uh, on the city's website. You can also see the complete list of city meetings on the website, um, and you can access many of these meetings on the award-winning Madison City Channel. All right, that's my briefing for the week. I think we have a few questions and uh, a little bit of time to take them. All right, we have a question for Janelle and one for you, Mayor. All right, we'll start with Janelle. Good morning, Janelle. Good morning. The question for you says, you said yesterday Dane County's order number nine is more restrictive than Governor Evers' emergency order number three. And Dane County will continue with its own order and guidelines. One of the differences is the capacity limit. It seems Dane County is currently allowing some workplaces and businesses to remain at 50% of capacity, and the state order is for 25%. So, will Dane County go back to 25% capacity for those businesses that have capacity limits? And if not, why? Just looking for clarification on which should follow the 25% and which can follow the 50%. Thank you. So first I'd like to say I know that the, um, the, the governor's order allows for local units of government to be more restrictive, and I'd like us to think of that as more protective of health. Um, what it does is sets a floor um, for communities to use and to build some consistency across the state. We feel that what we have in our emergency order uh, requires, not we feel, we know that what's in our order requires all businesses to implement written hygiene, cleaning, and protective measures, policies, and procedures, and offer, and requires training of employees. So we will continue to follow our emergency order because of these more protective for health measures that businesses are required to operate under here in Dane County. Thank you, Janelle. Any other questions? The other questions are quite similar, so that's why we only asked one. Thank you. Thank you. And we have one question for you, Mayor. And the question goes, when does the streetery program end and could it be extended? Is there funding available from the city to support restaurants as they adapt their outdoor patios for colder weather? Great question. Um, So we actually did extend the streetery program until April of 2021. Um, And I'm hopeful that this will allow uh, many of our businesses um, to continue to take advantage of outdoor space um, as long as uh, the weather stays um, cooperative. uh, We will try and get folks outdoors as much as possible. Um, In terms of assistance to businesses, uh, we do, uh, the City Council did approve our Small Business Equity and Recovery Program and our um, Economic Development Department is, someone's calling you, Janet. (laughs) Um, 
Uh, so we we did approve that program, and our economic development division is um, working on rolling that out. I would encourage any small businesses that want to take advantage of streetery um, or are interested in understanding what resources are available to them from the city to please contact our Office of Business Resources. Um, they can connect you uh, with resources. They can answer your questions. They can introduce you to the right staff. Um, to get those questions answered. Um, you can also check out uh, Downtown Madison, Inc. and the Greater Madison Chamber of Commerce or the um, Black Chamber or the Latino Chamber um, to get more information about business resources that are available uh, in our community. So lots of opportunity, but yes, we have extended the Streetery program certainly through April. Um, I think it's been very successful, so I think that in April or before we'll be having a conversation about where we can make that a permanent uh, fixture in the landscape of our city. All right, any other questions? That's it, thank you. All right, thank you all uh, for joining us again this week, and we will see you next week. Have a great time. Remember to mask up, Madison. Thanks. <laughs>